as I think I've ever seen in high school ball. It is. It's a good. It's a good. It's a good rivalry. The thing about it is, on uh, this bunch, they hit hard and they want to beat each other, but it's not a dirty. No, there'll be no cheap shots. No. Uh, so it's uh, it's one of the deals that uh, there's no. But hey, it's no. It's no secret. And Coxie, right down below us, is probably saying about the same thing we are right now. There's no other team these two like to beat on each other. Yeah, they like to beat Carmine. Carmine likes to beat Fairfield. We're all set to go. By the way, this is WFIW AM and FM, Fairfield, Illinois, the sports voice of Southern Illinois. I'm Stan David. That other voice belongs to Bob Edwards. And the Mules are set to kick it off. Brooke Clayton's going to do the kicking off tonight. Back deep for Carmine, Dustin Buttry, a 6'1", 170-pound senior. He is flanked by number 24, David White, and by number 45, Stuart Howard. And we're underway, homecoming 1994. Coming downfield to Buttry, 15, 20, 12. Oh, he's got a hole. And the Beagles bring him down at about the 37 on a good open field tackle by Johnny Warren, but Buttry almost broke that. You know, it's one of the things we've talked about, Stan, that, that really scares us is if the Mules have a weakness, it is the kick return team. And, uh, I mean, yeah, the uh, kickoff team, not the kick return, the kickoff team. And uh, there's been some uh, runbacks this year that were very scary. Well, here come the Carmi Bulldogs with a first and 10 at the uh, Mules, or the, the Carmi 37. Out of a wishbone with a double tight end alignment. They run straight ahead with Rich. Brian's got about uh, three, four, maybe five yards as he crosses the 40 to about the 41-yard line. Give him about a four-yard pickup on the play. It'll be second and six for Carmi. Here come the dogs out of the huddle. This time they go with a power high formation. No, oh, that's a bone. I'm sorry. Adam Rawlinson is the quarterback. He takes the snap. He hands off to the second man through, which is Stuart Howard. And he is brought down short of the 45-yard line. On the tackle for the Fairfield Mules was Brooke Clayton. It'll be third down and about two for uh, Carmine at the, the Carmine 44-yard line. And it's a long two, almost three. Here come the dogs in an eye formation. There's the snap. Brian Rich rolls forward. He's going to be short of the first down as the mules stack him up at the 46-yard line. That's going to be about a yard short. Several mules on the hit. Brooke Clayton, Darren Milner, Matt Hodges, and others. And it will be short of the first down. Looks like about a yard short. And we'll see what Carmine chooses to do. See what Lou Wicks thinks here early in the ball game. Might set the tone for the game, Stanley. They're going to go for it. Yeah, and the Mules go to a 5-2 defense. It's fourth and a yard. There's the snap. Handed off to Rich, and he's got the first down and more. He's in the Mule territory to the 49-yard line. They went off tackle left and uh, found a soft spot and got about uh, five yards on the play. So the Mules had the middle stack, but they went to the off tackle play and got the first down. First and 10, Karma at the Mule 49 with... Ten minutes to go in the first quarter. There is no score. First possession of the night. Mules uh, in a 52. There's the snap. And Brian Rich has the football. He is knocked off his feet, but not before he gained about four more. I tell you what, he's a handful, Bob. He's a good runner. Well, we've talked about it a lot of times in the uh, other games before about how this is what we feared out of Carmi. Brian Rich is an outstanding running back. And... Uh, you know, we made mention once or twice about how he would love to have our line to run behind. He uh, has picked up five more at second and five. This time they go with Stuart Howard and uh, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. There's a flag way downfield. We'll have to see what that is. But Stuart Howard uh, lost yardage back to the 46. And if this is a penalty on Carmi, they may decline it, the Mules might. They're talking to the Mules right now. I think it's a holding downfield, frankly. So unless it's a major, they'll probably decline it. If it's a clip, they might take it. That put it back to the Carmi side of the 50. Well, they're talking it over right now uh, with the mule defense. It is holding against Carmi. Oh, and the mules are going to take it. I would have declined that, frankly, but because uh, that's only going to move it back to the 50. Well, they're going to go from the line of scrimmage since the uh, holding was downfield ahead of the run. 
they'll go back to the previous spot, which is the line of scrimmage. Okay. So that does make sense. It's back to the Kermai 46, where it's second down and 15. And this is what the Meals would like to do, get Carmine in long yardage situations. They hand it off to Stuart Howard, and another flag is down, and uh, Howard is down at about the Mule 46, but I think it's going to be another holding on Carmine. The umpire threw the flag, and that's usually an indication of holding. And that's yep, what that's it the is. Case. So this one's laying at the Carmine 48, so the Meals uh, take it again. That'll move it back to the 38-yard line of Carmine. Uh, where it'll be uh, second down and even longer. And that is the indication. We'll go from the spot of the foul. I guess, oh, line of scrimmage again? Well, yeah, it was ahead of the play again. Oh, okay. So that's going to take it back even farther to, the to about 36. the 36 yard line, where it'll be second down and uh, 21, 25. 20, yeah, about 25. Second down and 25 for Carmine at their own 36. So they're in a boat here. There's the snap. Handoff goes to Stuart Howard. He slips one set of tacklers, and now Marty David brings him down at the 40. Pickup of about four on the play. Brooke Clayton had a hand on him at the line of scrimmage. Couldn't knock him on his feet, but Marty cleaned up on it, and it is now uh, third down and 21 for Carmine at their own 40-yard line. And those, those, those plays right there scare me, Stanley. Marty brought him down by his shirt, yeah. and uh, had he broken free, he had a lot of room to run. Adam Rawlinson, the quarterback, is the number three quarterback. Uh, he's a converted running back. Uh, Jason uh, Kirkendall and Ryan Sykes are both injured, the one and two quarterbacks. And he rolls out to throw, and he gets his pass away and incomplete. Intended in the flat for, well, whom, I don't have a 33. whom we have no name. I'll see if I can find out. Okay. So we'll check on that. But it's fourth down and long for Carmine. And... Uh, They'll be in a punt situation. Mules have 10 men at the line of scrimmage. Back deep is John Warren. Carmi flanks two uh, people wide, so the Mules cover them. Snap is right on the money. The kick is away, and it's a terrible punt. John Warren's going to have to let it roll. Look out, look out, look out. Don't touch it. Jim Milner almost touched the ball as he was blocking and didn't see it. But uh, it'll be Mules' ball as it rolls dead at the Mule 25. It turned out to be a decent punt, but it was terrible when it was kicked. Uh, they have no 33 either. So. so, well, we won't worry about it then. I know 32 is Brian Rich and a 34 is Jonathan Williams. So, Michael Greenwood. Michael Greenwood. Thanks, Z. Oh, yeah, I do have that too, Bob. They added that late to the list. Lou Wicks did give me that. Okay. Okay, so that's who that was. Meals first and 10 at the 25. There's the snap. Matt Link goes straight ahead for large yards. Almost a first down, nine on the play. It'll be second and one for the Meals. Well, our, Stan, old, our old buddy Steve Cox asked me, he said, what's the key to your team? I said, very simple, offensive line. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Hey, we have good backs. We've got a good quarterback. We've got good receivers. But our offensive line is what makes us go. Key to the team, and they just opened up a hole for nine yards. Second and one, handoff Matt Link once again. He's got the first down. He's out to about the 37 or 8. It'll be first and 10 for the Meals. And while we're talking about that offensive line, we'll mention who they are. Jeremy Ellis is the center. The guards are Chad Richardson and Justin Townsend. The tackles are Cam Tullis and Zach Large. The tight end is Kurt Robbins. And here they come to the line of scrimmage. Jason Baker splits wide to the left side. Wishbone in the backfield. Kip Walters. There's a whistle, and uh, play was stopped before the snap. What do we have here? Well, he's, the official is pointing to himself, so the umpire is saying, my time. Uh, I think one of the Carmine people had a snap. He was trying, was trying, he to, was get trying to get it snapped as the play was beginning to start, and they stopped it. So the Mules will have to start all over again. Wind the clock, 7.28 to go in the first quarter, and we have no score. Here first, come the Mules out of the huddle. First and 10 at their own 37-yard line. There's the snap. Walters hands it off to Eric Simpson. Eric looking for the corner. He's across the 40 to about the 43, about a five-yard pickup on the play, depending on the spot of the football. Looks like they'll put it down at the 43. Let's give Eric five at second and uh, five for the Mules at that point. Seven minutes left in the first period of play. There is no score. Carmi's first drive was stopped by two holding penalties, actually. Yes, it really was. Snap. Hand off Darren Milner. Darren 
is going to be close to the first down, but a little bit shy, I think, Bob. So it's going to be third and about one for the Mules at the Mule 47. As it's been nothing fancy so far, just straight ahead football. And just exactly what we talked about, just uh, right behind that offensive line as the Mules uh, offensive line opening up the holes on either side. Eric Simpson comes into the lineup. Brooke Clayton's at fullback. There's the snap. They hand it off to Eric. And he's got the first down and plenty more as he bowls his way across the 50 to the Carmi 48-yard line where the Mules will have a fresh set of downs. First and 10 Mules at the Carmi 48. Marty David's going to come back in and looks like the Mules are going to go with the Buffalo backfield for a while, Bob. The Buffalo backs are in and... Uh we mean that kindly, folks. Yeah, the coach is called the elephant backfield. <laughs> Clayton at fullback, Marty David at halfback. Darren's going to get the ball run to the right for about 15. Here we go. Oh, well, the uh, Carmi Bulldogs were blocked out on the end, but slipping through from a tackle position was number 64, Clinton Dunn, and the 6'4", 230-pound senior made a nice play at the line of scrimmage. Sure did. Stopped uh, for no gain as it had... Had that not happened, uh, it was going to be for about 15 yards yeah, because the, the outside was wide open. The outside was wide open. But Dunn, nice play by Dunn. Meals now face second and 10. They pitch it out to Milner this time. Darren gets a block from Zach Large and then runs right into Zach. And uh, he picked up about five on the play, maybe six. Darren doesn't run around very often. He runs through people. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I didn't get to see Darren this week. I wanted to kid him a little bit about up at Flora last week when he when made the little... When he was juking and jiving. When he juked a little bit and went around some guy and slipped and fell down. Yeah. Uh, we made the comment, bet he doesn't do that anymore. He'll just run over him next time. Probably after that, if I'm going to slip and fall, I'm going to get all the yards I can. So here the Mules now face a third and six at the Carmi 44. Pitch goes to Darren Milner, and Darren's got the first down and plenty more. Look out. He's down the sideline to about the Carmi 30-yard line where they say he stepped out of bounds. So... First and 10 for the Mules as the offensive lineman got out in front and moved the sticks once again. 31-yard line, is it? 31-yard line. First of, and 10 for the Mules. Of the Carmine Bulldogs, 4.55 to go in the first quarter. Clock is stopped because he got out of bounds. First drive of the night for the Mules, and they've moved the ball very well. Mules now with a slot offense. They fake the pitch out, throw over the middle to Kurt Robbins. He's got it. No, he dropped it. Incomplete pass is called, so it'll be second down and 10 for the Mules at the 31. It looked like Kurt had it, but he never did find the handle on it, Bob. Never did have possession of it. That's a good call. The, the umpire was right there on the call. Brian Rich had recovered the ball. He looked up at him and said, oh, come on. <laughs> Thought he had him a fumble there. Yeah. But uh, Kurt was juggling the ball as he went down. Out of the bone with a split receiver, Richard Reed. Kip takes the snap. And Darren Milner doesn't get much there. Carmi's stiffening up a little bit. Meals are going to face third and about eight or nine here, Bob. As he crosses the 30 to about the 28. Well, uh, we're in four-down territory. They're inside the 30-yard line, so definitely in four-down territory. Kip Walters goes over and gets the play from Coach Bob Hatfield, who, again, looks very dapper tonight. Third and a long seven for the Meals at the Carmi 28-yard line. 4.24 to go in the first period of play. There is no score. Walters takes the snap, rolls out to throw the football, has plenty of time, and he has Richard Reed open, and he's got it, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Mills. Kip Walters, 28 yards to Richard Reed, who made the catch, turned up field, and dove into pay dirt. Had to tiptoe that sideline. An excellent job by Richard Reed on the after the reception. Meals will go for two on the extra point. That score coming with 4-12 to go in the first quarter. Puts the Meals up six to nothing, and uh, John Warren will come in and run the two-point conversion. See if John, they're in a slot right now. Meals do shift to the eye, and Carmine jumps offside, so they'll move it up a yard and a half. And uh, do it again this time from the yard and a half yard line instead of the three and the mules will try the two-pointer once again this time the mules will not shift in the eye well john warren sets them down pitches out to darren milner and darren has a race fawn and he's into the end zone for two 
Heels 8, Carmi Zip. You're listening to Meals Football on WFIW. Outside, this time uh, he will not make the 30 as he's rolled up at the 28. Several meals on the tackle. Brett McGuire there, Brandon Doty there, and some of the other meals in on the hit. Matt Link, Billy Hefner, and Carmi starts first and 10. Let's call it the 29-yard line. Bob, I don't know what Coach Lou Wicks was hollering about, but he was all over the officials. He's having a fit, and... Uh... He had it all the way back down the sideline as they came and was hollering at him again during the kickoff. I, I don't know either. I didn't see anything untoward. Uh, evidently, he did. Carmi first and 10 at their 29, and Brian Rich is stopped in the backfield by Seth Harnden. He lost yardage on the play back to the 27-yard line. <laughs> what would you do, Bob? Swallow bug? <coughs> My drink went down the wrong pipe there. <laughs> Yeah, I heard all that uh -huh. squealing and squeaking. And that You got red in the face? I thought I was going to lose you there for a minute. Well, I kind of cut my hair off there for a second. Back at the 27, it's second and 12, and Rawlinson is going to be hit and dropped in the backfield by Darren Milner on the option play as uh, he had nowhere to go with it. Rich was covered nicely by Matt Hodges. And uh, what is, what, Didn't you say it's in the second book of Isaiah? <laughs> yes, it is. Huh? Uh, what happened there, though, is uh, he didn't even get out to Brooke Clayton <laughs> for the end to get him. Uh, Darren shot from the linebacker and said, I'll get you right here. Uh, Third corner, down and 14 for Kerr right now. Corner had the pitch man, though. Yeah, he did. Now, I'm telling you, <laughs> Matt was right there. Third and 14 for Kerr at their own 25-yard line. They put uh, split receiver out to the right. Rawlinson takes the snap, wants to throw the ball, and a screen pass. He's down right there. The pass was complete to number 11, Trent Walsh, but he caught the pass on his knees, Bob, and that's a no-no in high school ball. Cannot do that. Once that knee touched the ground, you're there, right there. It doesn't make a difference if anybody touches you or not. So we're looking at a fourth and... Uh, 19. Oh, okay. Almost 20. I was going to say halfway to Boylston. It is David White back to punt. Last punt was terrible, but he got a great roll out of it. Snaps right on the money. Kick is almost blocked. The kick is coming down to John Warren, who fields it at the 49. Belly's back to the meal 49, and uh, there are flags all over the field. I have no idea Still what running. that's about. Still flagging. I mean, there are three flags on the field. I didn't see a clip, did you? No. But uh, we got flags all over the place, and we'll see here. And we're going to sort this out. They're talking to Carmine, so evidently it's against the mules. Well, I did. I looked up when I saw the flags fly. I saw no clips, but evidently somebody did because there are three flags out there. So obviously it's it's uh, something that everybody saw. It is a clip. Uh, and, uh, oh, both. Both ways. So this means you run to down over. Okay. So offsetting penalties will... Make Carmi punt again. First time I've seen a double clip. <laughs> well, you know, you watch this game long enough, you'll see everything. So a double clip, and we'll run it down again. Fourth down and 20 for Carmi at uh, their own 19. Two minutes to go in the first quarter, and again, uh, White will kick it. See if the Mules go for the block. Snap is on the money. Kick is away, and it is a rotten kick, and John Warren is going to field it on the third hop. Again, he's looking for room to run. He's got a little now. Johnny's still on his feet. He's down to the Carmi 36. So good run back by John Warren with very little blocking, Bob. Excellent run back by John. He got by that first little seam, and uh, had he been able to break that seam, he'd have went all the way. But uh, right there, the uh, Bulldogs hold him up, so the Mules will take over first and 10 at the Carmi 36-yard line. And uh, as you, uh, I liked your term on the last drive, Stanley. Very workmanlike, the last drive. And the Mules, nothing fancy, just uh, right up the middle, good, solid football. Yeah, it was a blue-collar drive. Mules go with the pitch out to Darren Milner. Looking for that corner. And he's going to be drugged down at about the Carmi 29. Stayed in bounds. Close roll. David White. But he got about six, maybe seven on the play. They'll put it down at the Carmi... 28. 28 yard line, so it's second down and three for Carmi or for Fairfield, a seven yard carry for Darren Milner. Darren hey. held a 96 yards last week, first time he's been under 100 all year. Might we see something a little unusual out of this? Out of the bone, Richard Reed goes wide to the right side. Snap, 
Eric Simpson has a huge hole. Still on his feet, he fumbled the ball, and Carmi's got it. Well, the ball pops free, and Carmi gets on it at the Carmi 14. Eric was running free, and the ball just flew out of his hands. And Carmi has it first and 10 uh, at the Carmi 14-yard line. Well, Bob, you know, the meals coming in tonight were plus 17 in giveaway takeaway, but they're a minus one right now tonight. Well, I couldn't, I didn't see uh, exactly who knocked it loose or why it came loose, but nonetheless, Carmine will take over, first and 10. It flew out of Eric's hands and Carmine got on it. Rawlinson takes the snap, hands it off, and no running room for Carmine as the Mule stuffed that play at the line of scrimmage. Well, they got a little bit out of that, didn't they? Yeah, they got a couple yards there. Stuart Howard carrying the ball across the 15 to about the 16, maybe 17. Give him three on the play. Second down and seven for Kermit at their own 17-yard line. Twenty seconds left, and the clock is moving here in the first quarter. Mules lead eight to nothing. And we're well on their way again, but the fumble gave the ball back to Kermit. They now face second and seven at their own 17. Rawlinson takes the snap. He hands it off to Rich. Oh, he's got a hole. Brian Rich is hit hard, but he's got the first down. John Warren smacked him down hard at the 27, but that's a first down for Carmine. They ran a counter play, Bob, and the Mules took the play fake. Sucked right in on it, but John Warren came up and made the stop and, as you might say, saved the touchdown because had he got by John, he was off to the races. Two seconds left in the first quarter. They will not get it off. Into the first quarter, Mules 8, Bulldogs zip. You're listening to Fairfield Mules Football on WFIW. First and 10 for Carmine at their own 27-yard line. As we start the second quarter of play, Mule's up eight to nothing. Carmi has gotten a bit out of a bit of a hole and uh, have a little more breathing room right now. Rawlinson, the quarterback, uh, is looking over the Mule defense. Takes the snap. He pitches out to, De to uh, Stuart Howard, and he is hit by Amos Eckleberry at about the 30 for about a three-yard gain on the play. Where it'll bring up second and seven for Carmi. <laughs> We're just underway in the second quarter. The Mule's up eight to nothing. And Carmi has a second and seven at their own 30-yard uh, line. And uh, Bob really was that first Mule drive. It was a blue-collar drive. Yeah, very well. Very much so. Very much so. And they were off on another one, but coughed up the pumpkin. There's the snap. Handoff goes straight ahead to Rich. He's got a hole, and he shoots through it. And uh, picks up some yardage out to the 40 or the 36 yard line. It'll be third down and about uh, one for Carmine. Marty David shot through the hole and missed him. It was beating the ground in frustration afterwards. And here come the dogs out of the huddle. Third down and one at their own 36. They fumble the snap. A big scramble is on. I think Carmine got it back. But it'll be fourth down now, and uh, they lose a yard or two, and they have to punt. You know, their last drive, Bob, earlier, that not the previous one, but the one before that, the penalties hurt them on that drive. They had a nice little drive going. And yeah. that same thing here, and this fumbled snap hurt them. Well, when you're one in five, those things happen. Look for a long count, though, to try to draw the mules offside. Rawlinson is the up man here. There's the snap. White gets his kick away. Again, it's a very low kick. It's going to take a Carmi roll, though, and roll out of bounds at about the 39 of the Mules. You know, not bad. Uh, when you get the roll like that, you know it's not going to be returned. And uh, as long as that ball takes that good roll, you come out decent on the punt. Well, you know, he gets uh, on there. He, he, he did get the ball to turn over, even though it didn't get up and spiral. And uh, as you said, it bounced in favor of the Bulldogs. So... Well, Mules will have it first and 10 at the 39-yard line. I know. I don't want to hear it. I'm trying to tell you something. <laughs> Kip Walters pump fakes down Look the sideline. Jason couldn't haul it in. Jason Baker, the touchdown maker, was off on the fly again. That one was just a touch too tall, Bob. It was, and uh, Bake can get up in the air, too, as he's 6'2". And, uh, but off his hands and to the turf. So it'll be second and 10 for the Mules at their own 39-yard line. And uh, if they did that on first down, who knows what they're going to do on second down. 
Meals take the snap, pitch out to Eric Simpson. He's got a block from Cam Tullis, and Eric has about 12 yards, so it's first and 10 for the Meals. i tell you what, Stanley, that play, I, Eric Simpson, I've talked to Eric about that. He just loves that play. Of course, him and Cam are good buddies anyway, and uh, Cam gets out there and turns that corner for him, and Eric turns it on when he comes around that side, and he's got the speed to pick it up. And there's nobody there until the safety comes up and meets him. And he got 12 yards out of it. On the west end of the field, their banners are right next to one another. And if you're wondering why it says Eric Lewis Simpson, I'll tell you what that story is in a minute. There's the snap, and they hand it off straight ahead to Lewis. And he's got big yardage once again, and he's all the way down to the Carmi 32-yard line. Eric has a very marked physical resemblance to the character from Revenge of the Nerds who was called Lewis. <laughs> and the kids started calling him Lewis, and so does the coaching staff now. Timeout, Carmine. You're listening to Mules Football on WFIW. We'll be at the 32-yard line of the Carmine Bulldogs with 10.05 to go here in the second quarter of play. The Mules up 8 to nothing, and here come the Mules out of the huddle after the Carmine timeout. Walters takes the snap, hands off to Darren Milner, and Carmine reacted nicely and no gain for Darren. Making a good stop for Carmine on that play was Billy Recker. 5'11", 180-pound senior. No gain. Second and 10. Let's see if the Mules want to put it up here. Well, we have Richard Reed wide to the right. He's already caught one touchdown pass tonight. Officials time out as they check uh, one of the Carmine players' equipment that came uh, loose. They're all set to go now. Richard is wide to the right. Tight end to the left is Kirk Robbins. Wishbone in the backfield. And Kip Walters looks over the Carmine defense, which, by the way, is a 43. Takes the snap, hands it off to Darren Milner, and again, Darren is dropped at the line of scrimmage. This time making the open field tackle for Carmine was Brian Rich. Or check that, uh, Mike Greenwood. And again, no gain on the play. It'll be I actually lost a yard. It'll be third and 11. Hmm. Unusual to see two plays in a row like that out of the Mules, Bob. Yes, it is. Pro set for the Mules. Double split receivers. There's the snap. Over the middle over Kurt Robbins and tipped away by Stuart Howard. So it's fourth and 11 for the Mules at the Carmi 33. And I... I think the Mules will probably go for it. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, even if they even if they turn it over on downs, uh, they're still at the, you know, 65 yards or 67 yards away or whatever. Here come the Mules out of the huddle, leading eight to nothing. We have the pro set in the backfield. There's the snap. They fake the pitch out. They go to the sideline and nobody's there as uh, Kip dumped it and it'll be Carmi Ball. Well, in a case like that, uh, you kind of wish Kip hadn't dumped it, had to try to go for something downfield, because even if it's intercepted, it's fourth down. Well, the thing of it was, though, Stanley, uh, Eric Simpson was trying to turn the corner, and that's Kip had the play timed, and Eric, Eric got knocked off. Well, it'll be first and 10 for Carmi at the Carmi 33, 8.52 to go in the first half. It seems to be flying along, by the way, and it's 8 to nothing meals on top. Uh, not too many passes. Everything's been on the ground. Mm-hmm. Out of the bone, double tights for Carmi. There's the snap. They hand off to uh, the first man through, and big yardage that time. Is that Rich? No, it's Greenwood. 11 yards, first down, Carmi. Carmi's getting fired up, Bob, because they're acquitting themselves quite nicely here tonight. Yes, they are. They have a first and 10 at their own 44 yard line, and here they come out of the huddle. There's the snap. They hand it off to Greenwood. This time, a little less running room as he is uh, going to be dropped down that way. Got about three or four on that. He'll have it at the 48 of the meals, where it's a three or four yard gain, let's call it. Second down and six for Carmi at the uh, Carmi 48. 8.25 to go in the first half. Here come the dogs out of the huddle. Bone in the backfield. Carmi fans getting into it. There's the snap. They hand it off. Brian Rich has got a big hole. He's got the first down. First and 10, Carmi at the Mule 44. The Mule's giving up some yardage here in this particular series. They'll put it right smack on the 45. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
And here comes Carmi out of the huddle. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. Mule shift to a 52 now. There's the snap. And Stuart Howard slips a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Still on his feet down to the Mule 31. Well, he was hit at the line of scrimmage, but got away from that, and Carmi has a drive going. They're now, well, they put it at the 32, where it's another first and 10 for Carmi, and they're eating up big chunks of yardage right now. Here come the dogs to the line of scrimmage. Rawlinson takes the snap. They hand it off to Stuart Howard, and this time he's buried at the line of scrimmage. Milner, Marty David, Kurt Robbins, and Matt Hodges. All in there on the stop for the Mules. Along with Seth Harnden, no gain, second down and 10. It appears the Mules have adjusted. So it stays that way. They adjusted for that play anyway. They give him a short gain to the 31-yard uh, line, so it's second and a long nine. Rawlinson takes the snap, wants to throw. He is gonna be picked it off by John Warren. John went down to the turf as he picked it off, and it'll be Mule's ball first and 10 at the 22-yard line of the Mule. So that drive is thwarted, and uh, the Mules will uh, have the ball first and 10 at their own 22 with 7.16 to go in the first half. So it's one and one on the giveaway takeaways now. Mules went from a plus 16 back to a plus 17. <laughs> And let's see if the Mules, who they've had the penchant for doing this year, Bob, try to cash in right after a turnover. Walters takes the snap. He fakes once. Pass is intended for Darren Milner and off the mark and incomplete. As he had a lot of running room, but the pass was low and uh, not very catchable. Second and ten. Had he caught the ball, he had the sideline to ramble. So let's see what the Mules do here on second and 10. The clock stops with 6.56 to go. In the first half, Mules leading eight to nothing. There's the snap. Handoff goes to Darren Milner, and he's across the 25 to about the 26. And maybe the 27, depending on the spot of the football. It'll be third down, and uh, let's call it five for the Mules at the 26-yard line, 27-yard line. Third and five. Jason Baker brings the play in from Coach Bob Hadfield. Yeah. We'll see. Baker goes wide to the right. There's the snap. They fake the handoff, and Walters flips it out complete to Eric Simpson. He's got the first down still on his feet, and he'll be tackled at the 40, or pardon me, 37 or 8 yard line, first down for the Mules. Stanley right there is one of the advantages of Kip Walters. As big as he is, 6'4", and what do they list him at? Uh, 215, 210. He had a guy hanging on him as he threw that pass, and... Uh, a smaller quarterback would have went down and not got the pass away. Yeah, he appeared unimpeded as he threw the ball, but there was a Carmayan draped across his legs trying to bring him to the turf. But it's a first and 10, and Darren Milner goes straight ahead and almost broke free, but he'll be brought down at midfield. It'll be another first down for the Mules. Somebody had a hold of him by the shirt, Bob, or he was off to the races. It looked like big number 53 on the plate, Daniel Alate. A 5'10", 230-pound senior. Or is that Alate? A-L-L-A-T-E. I have on mine, it says uh, A-L-Z-A-T-E. Oh, well, I guess you're right, Bob Alzate. <laughs> Why get you some glasses? You're, you're failing. You missed a spot here in the third game. Getting old, aren't you? You didn't do that, I'm telling you. It's awful. Oh, darn it. Darren Miller slipped as he broke through the line of scrimmage, so he'll only, you know, here we are greedy again, Bob. He only gets he'll, four yards. He only gets four or five on that, but he could have had quite a bit more. Well, uh, had he made the cut, he had big time yardage. Meals lead eight to nothing with 5.35 to go here in the uh, first half of play. Meals have had the ball virtually all night long, but only eight points to show for it. Carmine's had a couple of good drives. What's the whistle for here on the snap? I don't know. It's evidently against the mules. They've stopped the play. 
Carmine oh. was offsides. They lined up offsides, and when the ball was snapped, that that makes them that makes them offsides. That makes the play stop right now. So that'll be real close to a first down. It's going to be just shy of a first down. Second down and about a foot for the Mules. Hmm. And uh, free play here. It's a freebie, folks. Let's see if the Mules go up top. Jason Baker goes wide to the left. He likes that left side. We're going straight ahead with Eric Simpson. He's got the first down and more down to the Carmine 34-yard line. First and 10 for the Mules, 5-13 to go in the first half. Mules lead 8 to nothing. Well, Mules grinding out yardage up and down the field, but as Stanley said, only eight points to show for it. They lead 8 to nothing, 5-10 to go here in the first half. Mules have uh, turned the ball over once, so has Carmine. There's the snap. Walters pitches out to Eric Simpson. He's got Cam ahead of him. Nice block, Cam. Eric has the first down, down to about the Carmine 20-yard line. Again, his old buddy out there in front allowed him to turn the corner. Good job, Cam Tullis. First and 10 for the Mules at the Carmine 20 with 4.57 to go in the first half of play. Mules up 8 to nothing. It's homecoming here tonight. Big, big crowd on hand to watch the ball game. I tell you what, Stanley, when you got lawn chairs, not only in this east end zone, but we got them down here in the west one, too. Folks sitting down there watching the ball game. There's the snap. The handoff goes to Darren Milner, who fumbles the football, and he gets right back on it. So the Mules retain possession, and it will be close to a first down. He had a big hole to run through, and he got spun around. The ball came flying out. He and Zach Large were both there, and one of them got on it. And it is enough for the first down. <laughs> first and goal for the Mules at the Carmine 9. 4.43 to go here in the first half of play. Mules lead 8 to nothing. And here come the Mules out of the huddle. Yeah, I thought Darren was going to go all the way until he I, lost the handle on the ball. I did too. There's the snap. They hand it off straight ahead to Matt Link. And Look he's going to score. Gonna score. Matt Link from 9 yards out. And the Linkster gets the touchdown. And the Mules are on the board for the second time tonight. With 4.30 to go here in the second period of play, that makes it 14 to nothing, and the Mules will go for the deuce. That's Matt's fourth touchdown in two weeks. He had three last week. So the Mules go for the two-point conversion now. John Warren will run the uh, two-pointer. Mules will ship to the eye. There's the snap. John rolls out right, looks into the end zone for Richard Reed, and he's got it. Meal 16, Carmine Zip. You're listening to Meals Football on WFIW. What? Clayton will kick it off for the Mules. There's the boot. It's a high boot coming downfield short to Buttry, and he is going to be hit and dropped at about the 33-yard line. Eric Simpson on the tackle for the Mules. And they'll put it at the 34. Will it be first and 10 for Carmine? Carmine had a good drive going last time. They moved down the field, Bob, with big chunks of yardage and uh, threw the pass and had it picked off. Yeah. You know, one of the things about uh, I think we'll begin to see, though, Stanley, uh, the conditioning of the mules, I think, will start to wear on the, the Bulldogs. They have more people going two ways, and uh, we'll see how things like that work out. Long count. Rawlinson uh, hands it off. Brian Rich gets to the outside, and Darren Milner drags him down before he could turn the corner. And a pickup of about uh, four on the play out to the 38-yard line. Second down and six for Carmine. Carmine Stanley last uh, drive they were uh, you know the adrenaline was really flowing they were rolling and, right along and they were opening up holes in the mule right in the middle of the mule line frankly I don't know why they ever threw a pass here they go with the counter play to Stuart Howard he gets the corner he slips and falls but he'll have the first down I believe and again the mules took the play fake and Scott Furhop is not happy with that way the mules played that one First and 10 for Carmi at their own 44-yard line. 3.34 to go in the second period of play. Meals up 16-zip. 
Carmi has shown the ability to run the ball a little bit. They run the ball very well. There's the snap. They hand it off to the second man through Brian Rich, who's getting a crowd right now. Got hit first in the backfield by Marty David, spun around, and then the rest of the meals were there to make sure he got no further. And uh, no gain on the play, second and 10 at the 44-yard line. 3.08 to go in the uh, second period of play. Meals up 16 zip. And uh, here comes Carmi out of the huddle. There's the snap. They hand off on that counter play to Rich. And this time he is going to get short yardage. Marty David and also on the tackle for the meals was Darren Milner as they wrapped him up at the 47-yard line where it's going to be third down and about... Uh, about seven for the dogs. Ah, oh, short seven, long six. Why does everybody talk to us? We must have friendly faces. I don't know. Fumble, Fumble on the snap. Rawlinson gets on it, but not before he lost yardage. Back Emily, to the I, I knew I had the winner. 44-yard line. I did Emily knew. win? No, Emily, she cheated, and, and, and I didn't win. Oh, well, okay. Must be fixed. I know it has to be fixed. It's a rigged drawing. Yeah. It's rigged. The drawing's rigged. Fourth and ten now for Carmi back at their own 44 after that loss on the play. Is Lou Wicks going to kick here? Is he going to go for it? I think he's going to go. We're under two minutes. And, uh, well, I don't know. I think he's going to just let the clock run down and call timeout right before the... He does call a timeout. We'll take a 30-second break. This is Fairfield Mules football. Fourth down and ten for Carmi. 150 to go in the first half, and uh, here we go again, Bob. The Mules will get the ball back late in the half, and uh, they show that propensity to score. They've done it uh, often uh, in the previous games. We did it in the Mount Carmel game, and we did it uh, Edwards County Edwards game. Edwards County game. We did it in the Florida game. Uh, uh, I can't remember whether we did it only or not. We, we came up one yard short at the Salem, Salem game. game. So uh, we'll see what Lou Wicks has up his sleeve here. We'll see if the Meals try to block a punt here. I, I just, I don't know if they're going for it. I can't believe they're going for it here on fourth and ten. Of course, what have they got to lose? They're hey, one and five on a year. That's right. That's right. What have you got to lose? Carmine comes out of the huddle. They're going for it. Bone in the backfield, split receiver to the right. Make that left. Meals fake blitz, and somebody moved. And Brooke we Clayton is pointing to the other side. We'll see what the official says. And the Carmi Bulldogs are shaking their heads, so it's them. So that'll make it fourth and 15. Marty David got up in the line of scrimmage as if to blitz, and the guard there kind of flinched when he saw him step into the line of scrimmage. It cost him five. So, fourth and 15 stare at the Bulldogs now, back at their own 39-yard line. They're still going for it. Like you said, what have they got to lose? Excuse me. And there's the snap. Rawlinson rolls out to throw. He tucks it away, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds well short of the first down. So the Mules will take over first and 10 at about midfield. As Rawlinson rolled out to throw and saw he had no one open, so he turned upfield and tried to get the best he could. He got some pretty good yardage to the Mule 49, hey, actually. I'll tell you what, had it not been for the... Uh, illegal procedure penalty that would have been a first enough yardage for a first down yeah that five yards is what killed him on that meals are going to go without a huddle as soon as the officials blow it in play and there it is meals are already at the line of scrimmage kip walters takes the snap pitches out to eric simpson and this time he's going to be brought down after about a four yard gain a flag flies it may be a face mask <laughs> That stops the clock. Oh, I think they're going to call holding on Cam. Well, Cam was clear out of the play. That's what they're going to do. They're talking to Carmi. Well, he was clear out of the play. He wasn't blocking anybody. Oh, they call a clip on him. Ooh, my, my. And Bob Edfield just kind of goes, ah, with his hand like, you got to be kidding. So that'll bring it back 15 yards. That was the cheapo there, folks. So it'll go all the way back to the 35-yard line where the Meals will have it first down and long. And Scott Furhop is really letting the official have it. 
first. He's saying, hey, he turned on him. He didn't hit him in the back. Yeah, Scott's still talking to the official, and the official doesn't want to hear it. Now, Bob Hadfield's down there. They're both giving it to him. Meanwhile, the Mules run straight ahead with Darren Milner. Darren breaks a tackle. Look out! Another. Gets to the outside, and he's going to be dropped down. At, oh, nice pass! At the Carmi 46-yard line by Henry Lewis. Drug him down with the face mask. Okay, it'll be second down. Yeah, I thought so, too. Second down in a long six for the Mules. So the Mules made up a goodly amount on that uh, run there. Minute to go in the first half. Walters takes the snap. Darren Milner hit at the line of scrimmage and gets across for about one or two. And the Mules call a timeout. We'll pause for 30. You're listening to Mules Football on WFIW. 30 or excuse me, 52 seconds to go in the first half. The Mules facing a third and three with the ball at the Carmi 44 yard line. And obviously this late in the half, they're not gonna think about punting it either, Bob, oh, no. if they don't get it here. Oh no, it's a four down situation. And uh, plenty of time for the Mules to score. They, we, we scored with uh, a lot less than this before. You know, Bob, the Carmi's one victory this year was against a pretty good Lawrenceville ball club. We talked about Lawrence Hill's defense last week. Carmi put 28 points on the board against them. Uh, well, I tell you what, the way Carmi ran the ball, hey, folks, I, I'm surprised they're one and five the way they played against us tonight. Well, they lost to a hapless Flora team, uh, and uh, Alney beat them. Red Hill beat them. There's the snap. Walters rolls out. Fakes the flip and now goes out to Eric Simpson. He's going to be short of the first down. Eric's going to be about a yard short at the 30 or 41 yard line of Carmi. It's going to be fourth down. The clock moving with 37 seconds. Meals want a timeout. Fourth down and a foot for the Meals. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Meals Football. Carmi has uh, lost to Mount Carmel also. They got beat by Mount Carmel last week. They've got Salem coming up, uh, I believe, next week, yeah, Bob. Next week. Uh, so they haven't played them yet. Salem on the playoff bubble. They're going to have to play hard the last three games. Meanwhile, the Mules have a fourth and a foot here. By the way, we'll have all the halftime regalia on the air for you. Mark Wells will be announcing the Queen candidates and all that kind of thing. We'll have a mic on Marky. There's the snap. Handoff straight ahead. Darren Milner, he's got the first down. And Matt Link. Matt Link, he's still on his feet. He's all the way down to the 18-yard line. That'll stop the clock on the first down with 28 seconds left. And the Mules are going to go without a huddle. Hey, Darren, bad. It's one of my buddies who watches practice with me. Want me to say hi on the air to him tonight. Tyler? Yeah. Take the pitch out. Throw to Darren Milner. He's wide open. Same, Touchdown, Mills. Same play that they scored on in the Mount Carmel game to end the first half. Yes. Exactly. 19, 19 seconds left. It's an 18-yard touchdown pass from Kip Walters to Darren Milner. And the Mules are now up 22 zip. And we'll go for the deuce. Wide open was Darren, and he just uh, caught the pass and waltzed into the end zone. You know, it was uh, almost too wide open. It was real it wide scared open. scared me. There go the mules shifting to the eye. John Warren takes the snap. They go to the short side this time. John's going to run it in himself. So the mules are up 24 zip. You're listening to Mules Football on WFIW. Get off, you know, Bob, I mentioned Tyler earlier. There's about four, about eight-year-olds who come and watch the Mules practice every day as the kick is short and Carmi falls on it at the 29 with 17 seconds left. They'll start there. And they I mean, they sit and intently watch practice. These about eight- or nine-year-old boys, and you can tell that they would like to be out there among <laughs> those playing. Hey, Tyler plays junior league and does a good job, too. He, he's a tough little character. Uh, these kids, I mean, they, they, they are learning because they're watching practice, paying attention to the coaches, and they're picking up everything they can pick up. And they're over every day at the practice. Carmine's called a time. We're going to keep it right here. 
We have 17 seconds left in the first half. Mule's up 24 zip. And uh, while we're talking about it, folks, girls, you down there, Fairfield Lady Mule's volleyball team, if you're listening, give me a yahoo holler down there in the end zone. Some of them were down there earlier. I don't know if they got a radio or not. Hopalong's always down there. Yeah, I saw Hopalong. She was sitting in the chair down there next to next to old Frosty. And they uh, they had a big, big win last night at Flora. Oh, did they? Went on the road and took a three-game victory at Flora in that little gym up there. The big gym's all ready for homecoming, and we were all jammed in there and elbow to elbow and shoulder to shoulder and a uh, lot of spirit and enthusiasm on the night. And the Lady Mules... Uh, Lost the first game 16-14, but came back from behind in the next two to score the win. And it was quite exciting. The uh, JV Mules won their match two games to none, and the, the freshmen split and didn't have time to finish a third game. They run them on a, on a time basis. Amanda served 12 straight points, though. <laughs> Got that in, didn't you? There's the snap. Rawlinson rolls out to throw. Look out, Adam. He's going to go down. Kurt Robbins has him. Back at the 14, or about 16, and that'd probably be the last play of the half. Mule show no signs of calling a time. Carmine doesn't exactly want to get a playoff. First half has expired. It's the Mule's 24. Carmine, nothing. You're listening to Mule's football on WFIW. The Fairfield Mules marching band uh, came to the field, and they're on the field right now. Uh, right behind that, Coach Lou Wicks was having an animated conversation with the officials, Bob, and we still don't know. I don't know what his complaint is, but whatever it is, he is vociferous about it because uh, he had quite a discussion with him. Adamant also. Besides that, he was upset. And uh, not happy. He's mad. Angry. <laughs> In a foul disposition. <laughs> a dark mood. Didn't like the way things were going. And when you're behind 24 to nothing at halftime, you have a tendency to not like the way things are going. I'll tell you, Stanley, this is a... Uh, I love... as we start the second half and uh meals will get the football to start the second half some of our uh carmine folks down below stanley were looking up at us wondering uh how many points are we going to put up in the second half they're ready to go home right now the meals put up 24 frankly rather easily in the first half bob well you know i'm not uh, i thought carmine ran the ball well but yeah, I, you know the the if meals put up 24 points and i didn't think they played very well Short kick coming down to Marty David at the 22. Marty's out in the open. He's on his feet and hammered down at the 49. Boy, was there a collision there. Marty David going straight ahead, and he hit hard with a bulldog that's down. Henry Lewis was one of the tacklers, but another bulldog, and Marty David went hit head on. And Marty popped up and went bouncing to the sidelines. And this Carmine, uh, who is that? I think it's uh, Troy Hurt. Well, he is. And he is hurt. Oh, he's holding his arm. He probably got a helmet right there in the arm. That You know, it, it's not a serious injury, but those really sting. Uh, that arm's probably numb right now. When you get that helmet right on that bicep, that that arm just, just goes to sleep in a hurry. And that's what's happened to Troy, and he'll be all right. So 
Carmi fans, Troy will be back in the ball game. Coach Lou Wicks is talking to him right now. After I said, Troy, well, I bet that hurt, didn't it? <laughs> I just love it when you walk up to them kids and they're holding and they're really hurting. You go, hey, it's okay. It'll feel better when it quits hurting. Well, the meals start with excellent field position at the 49-yard line. There's the snap to Kip. Hand off straight ahead. Matt Lake. He's gone. Matt Lake's going to go 51 yards for the touchdown to start the second half. First play of the second half, and Matthew rambles 51 yards for the score. And Lewis is fit to be tied. Not, I mean, <laughs> what a hole opened up in the middle of the line. Yeah, what a hole. Your fullback usually doesn't have 51-yard runs, and Matthew just broke the line of scrimmage and said, see ya, and was off to the races. 11.38 to go in the third quarter. The Meals will go for the deuce, now leading 30 to nothing. John Warren moves him to the I formation. Takes the snap. Rolls out to the short side of the field. Flips in the corner of the end zone. Nice catch, Brooke Clayton. Or is that Kurt? Kurt, Kurt Robbins. Robbins. Meals 32, Carmine nothing. You're listening to Meals Football on WFIW. That's, uh, we've done it before and we'll do it again. Uh, Jeremy Ellis and Doug Townsend opened up a huge hole right at the line of scrimmage, and Matthew did the rest. Kick coming down to Stuart Howard at the 19. He's looking for, oh, my. He slips one tackle and another, and he's still on his feet. But I tell you what, you talk about a pinball machine. He was pop, 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 but uh, wasn't wrapped up, and he got all the way out to the 35-yard line. Uh, Give Stuart back. credit. Yeah, he was hit hard three or four times. Good run back. Refused to go down. And never was on the ground. They stopped the play with him still standing. Yeah. Finally just stopped his progress. So Stuart Howard, who he is a senior, a 5'10", 165-pounder, was given it his all for the dogs. That snap, fumble on the snap. Rawlinson gets on it, and that's about the third time they've done that tonight. Well, you know, it's... It's third string quarterback, Stanley, and uh, not not I'm not being detrimental and to Adam. And Adam really never was a quarterback. They had to convert him because their yeah. top two got hurt. So uh, you know he's he's at a disadvantage. He looks slew wigs, kind of spread his hands out like coach. I'm trying. Yeah. They uh, Jason Kirk and all Ryan Sykes were hurt in one ball game, and uh, that was against Red Hill. With the ball of Stuart Howard, and he almost broke that one out into free range territory. He's got a first down. A little scary there. Well, the Meals are uh, giving up big chunks of yardage on the ground. And uh, they do shift to a 52. There's the snap. They hand it off to Brian Rich. He is met in the hole and picks up a couple to about the uh, mule 49 yard line. He comes up out of the pile <laughs> extremely angry. I don't know what he was upset about. I don't either, but uh, when he's mattering a wet head, wasn't but he? When he turned around, he had four mules surrounding him. He cooled down in a hurry, went on back to the huddle. He was mad about something. The official uh, listened to his complaint and didn't buy it, whatever it was. Third down, or second down and uh, seven for Carmi as Howard takes the football and he's across the mule 45 to the mule 44. It's going to bring up third and about two on the play. Mules have uh, Amos Eckleberry and uh, Darren Milner at linebacker right now in this 52 set. Marty David taking a breather. And the defensive front, the usual, Clayton and Robbins at the ends. Tackles are Harnden and Richardson, and David Jordan's in at the nose right now. There's the snap. Tailback Stuart Howard is going to be close, but I don't think he has the first down. So it's going to bring up fourth and short for Kermai. And he's getting a pretty good, generous spot out of that, so we'll see, but I think it's short. Fourth down and about a uh, yard for Kermai at the Mule 43 yard line. And Kermai is going for it. So we'll see if the mules hold here. Carmine gets a fresh set of downs. There's the snap handoff to Rich. Hit at the line of scrimmage, but second ever it gets him the first down. He's he down to the 41. Was hit in the backfield, but he surged ahead on the second ever. Got enough for the first down, and one of the mules was hurt on the flight. Away from the ball. 
I think that's Seth Harnden. But, uh, yeah, it is. It's Seth Harnden. And uh, Dr. Jones quickly out to check him out. I think he's twisted an ankle. Yeah, Doc's down on the very lower part of the leg, down there where we're in the ankle area. So that's not not up at the next joint, which is what you always worry about. That hurts, too. Yeah, that's extremely painful at the start when you first turn that sucker. So they're checking it out, and Seth's going to have to take a little bit of a breather here. The uh, Carmine Bulldogs will have first and 10 at the meal 41 with 8.55 to go in the third quarter. And Seth Herndon will be replaced by Cam Tullis. Cam likes to play defense, Bob, but they've told Cam that as long as that shoulder's in disrepair, he's not going to play defense. Well, so he gets his opportunity here. going to get his shot here as uh, they're still working on Seth. As you said, it's down and working at the ankle, the foot area there. So we'll see how uh, that turns out. Chad Richardson going to go over and check him out and say, hey, buddy. Seth's been playing great football from this defensive tackle spot this year. He got that one rolled up under him. Well, while they're checking Seth out, let's take a 30-second break. You're listening to Meals Football. Hi, I'm assisted to the sidelines. He walked off under, under his own power, and uh, Doc Jones is over with him, so I think he's going to be okay. Meals in a 52. They hand it off to Mike Greenwood, and he's blown back at the line of scrimmage. Cam Tullis on the hit, <laughs> <laughs> along with Amos Eckleberry and David Jordan. Oh, second and ten. As well, like they gave him about a six-inch gain. And Stuart Howard, or rather uh, Mike Greenwood, didn't uh, have much running room there. Meals have been giving up some yards, but you notice, Bob, when they get to this part of the field, they get stiff. Meals stiffen up a little bit. There's the snap. Second man through is Stuart Howard, and uh, no room to run there. First hit at the line of scrimmage by Chad Richardson, then covered up by David Jordan and Amos Eckleberry. No gain on the play, third and ten. Carmine wants a timeout. You're listening to Mules Football on WFIW. Just play one, Maryland, just play one. are up uh, 32 to nothing, and Carmine has a third and 10 at the Mule 41-yard line. As I said, Bob, uh, the Mules have been giving up some yards, but when they get to this side of the field, things get a little stiffer. The Mule side, it's almost like they're saying, okay, far enough. We'll uh, put the B on you right here. Uh, uh, and, you know, we've mentioned this before in the other games. Uh, the Mule conditioning uh, is starting to come into play right now because the Mules are... Uh, very, very uh, limber and, and quick and still uh, stepping nicely. Fall down, or uh, snap was uh, fumbled again. Amos Eckleberry almost got on it, but Adam Rollinson got it back, and that'll be fourth and ten for Carmine at the Mule 41, and they just had all kinds of problems tonight. Well, that's, that's uh, the thing that I was looking at a minute ago. The, the Bulldogs are tired, Stanley. They, they a lot of people that go both ways due to the injuries and and uh, the Mules are just fresher. Here comes Carmine with a fourth and 10 at the Mule 41. There, there is the snap. They pitch it out to Brian Rich. He wants to throw it, and the pass is incomplete, and the flag is down. And I don't know whether it's going to be on Carmine or Fairfield. John Warren was tangled up with uh, the Carmine receiver, who was Stuart Howard. And uh, they all talked to the official now, and... John went, we went to the turf, and but it's going to be on John, and Bob Hadfield's hot. So it's uh, Scott Furhop. They can't believe the call. Uh, almost everybody up here in the booth consensus thought it was on John Warren, or on uh, Stuart Howard, for shoving off on John Warren. But uh, they call it the other way, and it'll be first and 10 Carmine at the meal 25. Well, Coach Wicks bought one at halftime, didn't he? Yeah, I believe he did. 
Well, Lou, you can take credit for that one. You bought that one. First and 10, Karma at the mule 25 after the penalty. Thanks. I, I wish we could see the, uh, the play. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach Ayers. And Karma has a fresh set of downs. There's the snap. Handed off to Stuart Howard. He gets past the initial hit and gets down to about the 20. About a five-yard gain. So to bring up second down and five for Carmi at the 20. And Jim Milner talking to the official about something. I always say to that when I officiated Bob, almost every play somebody's talking to you about something. You watch this, watch that. They did this, they did that. It starts to get real chippy when that happens. Jeremy Ellis in at the tackle spot. Handoff. Oh, my! Jeremy Ellis and David Jordan put Brian Rich in the next week. And Brian Rich is hopping mad again about something, and I don't know what. He came up wanting to take on somebody, and the Mules were just applauding one another, but he was dropped all the way back at the 23-yard line, where it's going to bring up third down and seven. Well, Stanley, he, uh, he's limping, and uh, he was slammed to the turf, I mean very hard. Oh, he was hammered. Jordan and Jeremy Ellis, and Jeremy doesn't get to play much defense, came in and just ripped him uh, in the backfield. And now we have an official's timeout. I think Amos Eckleberry has a shoulder pad strap loose. Well, boy, I, I tell you what, Stan, I hate to do this to you, but... Uh, Go right ahead, Bob. Eat that sandwich. I'll, that, I'll Italian, talk while you're having that Italian beef. That Italian beef. beef. I'll tell I, you that. I Ruth know how Vaughan, good it was last time, Ruth, and uh, you've done it again. She's making that good Italian beef. Oh, my, is it good. Here come the Bulldogs out of the huddle, third and seven at the Mule 23. 32 to nothing, the Mules, with six minutes to go in the third quarter. There's the snap. Rawlinson rolls out with a football and is hit and dropped at the 20. So he got the loss back. That'll bring up fourth and five for Carmi at the Mule 20-yard line. And, of course, Carmi's going to go for it. They haven't punted uh, but a couple times tonight very early. And since then, when they've been in fourth down, they've gone for it. But here on the 20, obviously they will go for it with a fourth and five at the Mule 20. Adam Rawlinson looks over the mule defense on balance line now. There's the snap. And Howard is hit in the backfield and dropped at the line of scrimmage. Seth Harnden, or pardon me, Chad Richardson and Kurt Robbins were there to initially hit. Then he was wrapped up by some more mules, and the offense comes on. First and 10 at their own 20-yard line for the mules with 5.30 to go in the third quarter. Mules up, 32 zip. And offensively, Bob, they've pretty much had their way on the field. They haven't had... Uh, too many situations where uh, they find themselves in negative yardage or uh, unable to pick up the first down. Matter of fact, they well, the, only the only time we gave up the ball was on the fumble. Yeah, on the turnover. Otherwise, the Mules have scored every time they've had it. Straight ahead go the Mules, and this time rough sledding for Matt Link. As uh, he picked up a couple on the play out to the 22, and that's about all. Richard Reed brings in the play from the Mules' sidelines. And it'll be second and eight for the Mules at their own 22-yard line. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Mules leading their homecoming game here tonight, 32 to nothing. Richard Reed, Reed goes out wide to the right side. Richard Reed to the white Richard side. Richard Reed wide to the white. And there's the handoff to Darren Miller to the left, and he's got one man to beat. And that man holds onto the jersey long enough to get help from his friends. But it's a first down for the Mules out to the 34-yard line. And... Uh, See if I can get a number on that player for Carmi, who saved a touchdown. That would be Mark Kessler, number 22. Mark we see in the basketball games quite often for Carmi. And he held on long enough to get help from his friends. First and 10 meals at the 34. Snap, handoff, Matt Lake. See ya. Look out, he's gone. Matt Lake's gone touchdown. unless Henry Lewis can cut him off. But I don't think he can. Matt Lee's going all the way. It is a 66-yard touchdown run for Matt Link. 66 yards for the score for Matt Link. He's well over 100 yards tonight. Matt's having a big night. You know, Coach Bob Hadfield has always said, if you stop Darren, we'll go to Eric. If you stop Darren and Eric, we'll go to Matt. If you stop all three of them, we'll throw the ball. Matt's having the night tonight. Meals going for the deuce. They shift to the eye. Carmi jumps off sides. 38 to nothing. Fairfield is the two-point conversions upcoming. 
Pat Stewart, Bob looked up at me and went, wow. <laughs> we have so many weapons, Stanley. So many weapons. Meals now will go out of the pro set from the yard and a half. And John Warren takes the snap. He pitches to Darren Milner, and it's a race to the end zone, and Darren's going to get in there. Meals 40, Carmine Sip. You're listening to Meals Football on WFIW. Six time tonight. And there's the boot, high boot coming downfield. Buttry has it at the 14. He's looking for somewhere to run up the middle. Flags all over the field. Buttry's down at the 26-yard line. As... We have some extracurriculars out there, and Coach Bob Edfield comes out and says, come on, boys, get on off the field. There is a flag on the play. I would suspect that would be uh, some sort of an illegal blocker holding, which is what usually happens on a kick return, which would move the ball back. They're still discussing it. You know, well, we may have more than one penalty here. Oh, really? Well, a clip on Kermai is uh, what, the one that's going to be enforced. So it'll go back uh, half the distance from the goal to the 13-yard line. Well, they put it back at the 12, don't they? So... Well, that's about 13. About 13? About 12, Bob. I'll call it 12. All right, you call it the 12. It's 12. Phil thought it was 13, or Jeff did. First and 10 there at the 12 for Kermai. <laughs> There's the snap. Handoff goes to Brian Rich, and he falls forward for four or five yards. He did uh, turn that into positive yardage after he was hit at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Brett McGuire comes in for the Mules. He'll play a little defense. Jeremy Ellis goes out. Mules are filtering in some people tonight on defense in and out. Boy, I'll tell you about that error. He makes somebody a good wife one of these days. Yeah, he will. He does well. And and has a catch there. She can keep teaching the clean house. She'll be all set. No, I don't know. I, I bet she does. <laughs> New quarterback for Carmi, and that's uh, White. He hands it off to Brian Rich, who's looking for room to run, and Marty David slams him to the turf at about the 18-yard line. It'll bring up third down and about four for Carmi. Uh, the new quarterback is David White, a 5'9", 145-pound junior. So Carmi faces a third down and four at the 18-yard line. They're on 18 with 3.07 to go here in the third period of play. Long count. There's the snap. They hand it off to Brian Rich. He's trying to get outside. Kurt Robbins won't let him. And also covering up on the play is Jimmy Milner. So it'll bring up uh, fourth down and two for Carmi at the 20-yard line of the Bulldogs. I think they'll punt down Yeah, here. they may punt down here. That would be too easy to give the Mules six points if they didn't pick it up. Mm -hmm. The Mules may block the kick, too, although I don't think Coach Hadfield will put the kick block on at 40 zip. No, I don't think so either. He does have ten people at the line of scrimmage, however. He said he wanted to get a punt block this week. Not this time. Nice high kick. John Warren at the car by 49. Oh, he's got a picket line. John down the sidelines, still on his feet, cuts across he's the grain. He's all the way down to the car by 11. Good punt return by John Warren and excellent blocking by the Mules kick team, Bob. Great, great line. Set it up. John cut it to the left side and then came back across the field. And uh, as you said, I... I'm trying to think. I, I can't get a registered who gave him the block that cut him down the left sideline and allowed him to get up to the picket line. And uh, whoever it was, it's a great block. So the meals are in business. First and 10 at the Carmi 12, and we have an official's timeout now. For what reason, I do not well, know. Well, Doug Townsend cannot get his chin strap snapped, no. and uh, they're helping him get it fixed. He said, hey, help me, please. So now the meals are all set to go. First and 10 at the Carmi 12 after that punt return. Straight in. Matthew Lake having a night. Oh, man. Touchdown, Meals. Matt Lake from 12 yards out with 2.01 to go in the third quarter. That makes it 46 to nothing in the two point conversion upcoming. Are they going to kick? Here comes Kippy. They're going to kick. Kip has uh, had three this year. Swamper said last week was the first time we did it, but remember, we did it to Olney, too. 
kicked one there from like 18 yards, remember? Yep. So I remember. Brooke Clayton will hold. Kip Walters will kick. 201 to go in the contest or in the third quarter. Chad Richardson will snap. There is the snap, the placement, the boot. It's up. It's good. Meals 47, Carmine Zeff. You're listening to Meals Football on WFIW. Hugh Link will remember he has 138 yards just on the touchdown runs. Short kick by Brooke Clayton. It's loose. And the Meals have it. The ball was tipped by Carmine. Billy Hefner got on it. And the Meals will have it first and 10 at the Carmine 31. Matt Link has four touchdowns tonight. Three last week, Bob. Seven touchdowns in the last two ball games for Matthew. And again, like I said, uh, when everybody says, well, you stop Milner, you stop Simpson, <laughs> number 32 gets the ball, or Kip puts it in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Blue Wicks is beside himself. He just can't believe what is happening to the Bulldogs. Uh, the, the poor Bulldogs are having their problems tonight. They really are, folks. 155 to go here in the third. Meals up 47 to nothing. You have the football once again, first and 10 at the Carmi 31. There's the snap. Brett McGuire with the football. And Brett gets across the 30 to about the 28. As the uh, backup fullback from Matt Lake got some pretty good yards himself, about three. Down to the Carmi 28. You know, usually those are fullback runs right there. Yeah. But uh, Matt Lake has just broken him tonight for big yardage. And he's getting a breather right now. Backfield is uh, Eric Simpson, Darren Milner, and Brett McGuire behind uh, Kip Walters. Richard Reed goes wide to the left. Kip takes the snap. He hands it off to Brett McGuire. Brett's got pretty good running. Uh, close to the first down. And I believe it'll be a first down down at the Carmi 21-yard line. So the Mules will get a fresh set of downs. So Brett comes in and in two plays picks up 10 yards. Good running right there by the 5'9", 175-pound senior. Remember, Brett had a good uh, second half against uh, Red Hill, I believe it was, when he ran the ball quite nicely. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Mules are quickly out of the huddle. First and 10 at the Carmi 21. There's the snap. And this time, the Mules go straight ahead for not much yardage. Carrying the football was Brett McGuire. Brian Rich and Adam Rawlinson brought him down for a gain of one. It'll be second down and nine for the Mules at the 20-yard line. So Kermai is uh, pinching in to stuff that. Uh, yeah. Look out wide here up top, one or the other. Second and nine, just inside the Kermai 20. Kip Walters takes the snap and hands it off to Darren Milner wide. Darren cuts back. Darren is all the way down inside the 10 to about the five yard line where the mules are gonna have it first and goal to go. Let's see where they put it down. Right on the five. Right smack on the five? Right on the five. First and goal to go from the five for the Fairfield Mules with 28 seconds left here in the third quarter. The clock now moving. This will likely be the last play of the third quarter. Walter sets him down. Takes the snap. McGuire goes straight ahead, and Brett is not going to make the end zone. He'll be short by a yard or two. And uh, bring up second and goal to go for the Mules, and that will be the last play of the third period. After three quarters, Fairfield Mules 47. Carmi Bulldogs nothing. You're listening to Mules football on WFIW. Mules will have the football as we start the fourth quarter of play. Second down and uh, goal to go. Ball appears to be on the three-yard line of the Carmi Bulldogs as uh, the homecoming crowd across the way applauding everybody and everything over there. Uh, Give yourselves a hand, folks. You're having a big night. It's a big crowd uh, capacity. Good job, crowd. Oh, sorry, Bob. You turned me down. Well, yeah, you took your headset off and started squealing on me. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Excuse me. I was uh, over here. I was trying to get the report. Uh, Bert has got a report on uh, Stacy Rainwater. And... Uh, Oh, well, okay. <laughs> okay. Out of surgery, and she's going to be there a while. Hmm? Well, thank at you, least, Bruno. At least we're doing good. Everything's coming out all right with Stacy. We wish her the very best. Thank you. Straight ahead goes Brett McGuire into the end zone for the touchdown as the Meals Brett McGuire gets on the board from three yards out with one or 11.57 left in the game. That makes it 53 to nothing, and Kip Walters will come on to kick the extra point. Brooke Clayton will hold. 
uh, Verda Einstein cheerleading sponsor here said Stacy was out of surgery and she's having a rough time, so uh, our best wishes go to her. Low snap, and Miss Handel Kip picks it up and just falls on it and says, hey, let's just stop right here. So the meals do just that. We've got another kickoff coming up. Uh, we'll take a 30-second break. This is Fairfield Meals football. Brooke Clayton keys or tees the ball up. Yeah, he could key it up too, I guess. At the 40-yard line, <laughs> and uh, it will kick off again. We've had a lot of kickoffs tonight. 53 points on the boards for the Meals will do that. 11:57 left in the game. Eighth kickoff. High. Buttery at the 16. Oh, hello, America. David Jordan, I believe, sent him straight backwards at the 24. And that's where Carmi will start first and 10. Well, the Mules now, Stanley, I'm sure we'll uh, see some new faces and some new numbers, and we do as the uh, defense comes on the field. Uh, Jason Herndon, Seth's little brother, getting in there in the spot vacated by Seth, and I... I don't know where Seth is, whether he is uh, out for the night or not. Yeah, he's over there on the sideline with ice on his ankle. Yeah. So he's Jason, for the night. Jason Baker in for John Warren at the safety position. And there's the snap and a fumble snap once again. And uh, David White gets on it. He's the new quarterback for Carmine. Bobby Wells coming in the lineup for the meals. He'll replace Chad Richardson. As Chad's had a good game tonight, he comes to the sidelines to a round of applause from the Mules fans. Billy Hefner. Billy Hefner in for Marty David. Probably the last we'll see of Marty tonight. As he gets a round of applause, and uh, the Mules are getting their uh, applause time in right now. There's the snap. And a fumbled football once again, and Carmike gets on it once again. There's the poor Bulldogs, Bob, they're just having their problems out there. Well, you know, the the thing of it is, you know, uh, as we look now, as uh, Brandon Doty comes in uh, for Richard Reed at the other safety spot. Boy, I tell you what, Brandon had a game Monday night. Flora came down here, Bob, and they brought like five or six juniors and some varsity starters, and the J.B. Mills still had a big night. J.R. Hodges in a defensive end now. Brian Rich goes straight ahead, and he, or rather Greenwood, and he finds the sledding tough as Amos Eckleberry was there, along with uh, Billy Hefner to stuff the play. And here comes uh, all kinds. Oh, it's punt time. It's fourth down. I thought, whoa, we got mass subs, but the Mule punt return team comes on. John Warren barely nearly broke the last punt return for a touchdown. Mules again have 10 at the line of scrimmage. Snap is right on the money. Kick is away. It's a short kick. This time it's going to take a mule roll, and everybody gets away from it. And it rolls dead at the 40-yard line, where the mules will have it first and 10 at the Carmi 40-yard line. Second string offense coming out for the mules right now. As uh, they come on, John Warren will go to the quarterback slot. Back to Brandon Doty will be one back. We see uh, Jason Herndon, Zach Cooper, Bobby Wells. Brett McGuire, Billy Hefner. Billy Hefner. Ryan Best will be the tight end. Rennie Cates, Jason Harnden, J.D. the Thrill Hill comes out, <laughs> and he'll go wide to the left. Brett McGuire back at fullback. John Warren takes the snap, hands it off to Brett, and he's hit hard, but he picks up some yardage on the play. Brian uh, Rich is still playing football, Bob. All right, uh, Greenwood. Uh, that was Brian Rich that hit him there, 32 that time. He sent him backwards, but uh, not before Brett got three or four yards. Oh, I was talking about the, the play that, the behind oh, the where play. Where Ryan Best got his uh, clock clean. tail feathers dusted a little bit. That was Greenwood that uh, hit Ryan and uh, got up and was saying something, and the official told him to go on back over there. Neal's got three. It's second down and seven at the Carmi 37-yard line. Tony Arocco is in for the meals as well now. John Warren rolls out and is going to be sacked by Adam Rawlinson. Back at the 44-yard line, John was looking downfield, and he didn't have time to throw. Rawlinson had, uh, had a beat on him and got in there. Chris Melton coming in for the meals with the play right now. Has the Mules face now a third and 14 back at the 44-yard line with 8.36 to go in the contest. Mules leading 53 to nothing.
There's the snap. Warren rolls out, hands off second man through, and Brandon Doty was hit hard and driven back. Picked up about two or three on the play, but uh, Carmi uh, popped him pretty good and brought him back, and it's fourth and 11 for the Meals at the uh, Carmi 41-yard line. J.D. Hill will bring the play in from Coach Bob Hadfield. Better hurry, Bob. They already blow it into play. And the Meals are going to punt. Again, they better hurry. They may not get the punt off before the uh, delay a game penalty. Mills decide to punt rather than go for it on 4th and 11. It's Carmi 41. So Darren Milner, as John Warren goes in motion, and now that's delay a game. I knew that was coming. They hadn't went for the motion deal. Uh, they got it off. Too much time. And... Uh, yeah, we had a good snap from Jeremy Ellis. Yeah. Just, oh, man, we had a good snap. <laughs> Dad was proud of the snap. He'll get another one off, Jeff. He'll have another good one here. Ball back to the 46. And Darren uh, Miller back to kick again. <laughs> Darren's been kicking quite well when the Mules have had the punt here of late, which, frankly, hasn't been very often, folks. John Warren in motion. And there's the snap right on the money. Kicks away. It's a good one coming downfield. Buttry touched it and falls on it back at the six. Matt Hodges is up screaming. Henry Lewis clipped him back at about the three-yard line, but nobody saw it. Sometimes that happens, Bob. Nobody sees it. I saw it. I saw it. Matt got rammed in the back. But uh, it'll be Carmi Ball first and ten. What they put it? Seven? Seven-yard line. Yep. 7-18 left in the game. The Mule's up 53 to nothing. And uh, a lot of new faces out there for the Mules. We'll give you their names and numbers and they make when they make the plays. Alan Reynolds, freshman in at uh, linebacker, Bob. And he doesn't get in on the tackle, but a whole host of other Mules do. Jason Harnden, Billy Hefner in there as the uh, Bulldogs. Stuart Howard gets no yardage at all. He's dropped at the seven. Ryan Best comes in on defense. J.D. Hill comes in on defense for Jimmy Milner. So we've got freshmen and sophomores out there right now. There's the snap. They hand it off to Brian Rich, who's trying to get the corner. And he jukes once. He's going to have the first down, but he's brought down at the 24-yard line. So Carmi will get some new downs at their own 20. Eh, let's call it the three. First and 10. Eight, uh, pardon me, 625 left in the ball game. Feels up 53 zip. David White, the quarterback for Carmine, has been playing for most of the uh, ball game tonight after the first quarter and a half. Gives off to Brian Rich, and he's brought down on the play by J.R. Hodges and Alan Reynolds. You know, Bob, this has to be a big thrill for Allen. I know it's 53 to nothing, but when you're a freshman and you get in a varsity football game, you get pretty pumped. You bet. You bet. Here come the dogs with a second down and six at their own 27. He's a hitter. Yes, he is. Howard with the football, trying to get to the outside. Gets up to the 30, where it's going to bring up third down. And uh, away from the play, Jason Baker and Brian Rich have a set, too. Brian's had a irascible night. He's been, uh, well, you know, he's a quality football player, Bob, and when you get beat like this week after week, it gets old. Well, you know, it does, and uh, as we've mentioned, uh, we saw him have a great sophomore year, and then, of course, his junior year cut off last year. He had, like, almost 300 yards in the first two games last year that they played, and then, of course, the strike into the season. David White takes the snap on third and about three. He hands off to Brian Rich, and he's got the first down. Cuts to the outside and is hit and dropped hard on the play. Allen Reynolds again on the hit for the Meals, along with David Jordan. But it'll be a first down for Carmi at the Carmi 41-yard line. Uh, 
Uh, let's make the 42, where it's first and 10 for Carmine. And they move the sticks with 451 to go in the contest. There was the hot rumor last year, Bob, as you recall, that Mr. Rich was going to come to Fairfield when the strike was on down there, and that did not transpire. He would have made a quality addition to the Mules' backfield. But such was not the case. I think Brian's taking the rest of the night off. Stuart Howard still out there pumping straight ahead. Flag is down. And it's probably going to be a holding on Carmi. A pickup of about three or four for Stuart Howard to the 44-yard line. But uh, there's a smudge of yellow laying back at the 39. He's going to talk to David Jordan, and that's going to be holding on Carmi. And David said, send him back. So it'll be first and about 23. We'll yeah, see how the march flags, comes out. Yeah, let's see how many steps we got. Big steps or short steps here. Back to the 29-yard line. They got to go to the 42. Uh, 48. 48, I mean. 10. 20, but uh, 23, Bob. Hey, pretty good guess, huh? Pretty good guess. Pretty good guess. 4.23 left in the game. Mules up 53 zip. Carmi has the football. They pitch it out to Henry Lewis. Henry is uh, corralled. Yeah. yeah, there was a face mask. That puts the flag down for him. So, although Henry Lewis is wrapped up on the play, uh, he'll get 15 yards additional because uh, the Mules had a face mask. This will move it up from the spot of the foul, or actually from the end of the run, which is the 29. Uh, and will not give them a first down, but uh, will give them much better yardage uh, situation to get a first down. Several of the mules over there around Seth Herndon, Bob, checking him out, asking Seth how he's doing over there on the mule bench. On uh, the Mule starters, seeing if their buddy's going to be able to go next week against Lawrenceville. And the Mules try to get an unprecedented, perfect conference season. Well, it is precedented. I'm sorry. It was happened in 1957. But it'll be the first time since then. Yep. But uh, this victory tonight uh, does clinch a part of a conference championship for the Mules. Henry Lewis carries the football for first down yardage. Alan Reynolds wrapped him up, but not before he got the first down to the Mule 48 with 3.55 to go in the ball game. So it's first and 10 for Carmi. Carmi is substituting liberally as well, Bob. Coach Wick's getting some people in the ball game that uh, haven't seen some action on offense. And here come the dogs out of the huddle. David White, the quarterback, Greenwood and Lewis in the backfield. They go in an eye, and they fumble a snap again. And, uh, White falls on it. So he'll lose a yard. Back to the 20 or 49-yard line, I should say. Second down and 11 for Carmi there. 3.28 to go in the ballgame. Meals were very impressive tonight offensively, Bob. Very impressive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Here come the Bulldogs out of the huddle. High formation. There's the snap. Almost fumbled again. Lewis with it. And Henry's not going anywhere. He's wrapped up back at the 45 for a loss on the play of about five. They'll put it at the 46-yard line of the Bulldogs. Brooke Clayton on the stop. As uh, We don't have another defensive end. Yeah, uh, really, uh, we have three people who play defensive end regularly. Brooke and Kurt and then J.R. Hodges. Now, Marty David would be the second defensive end over there, but he's out from his linebacker spot, so they're just letting Brooke play. There's the snap. And rolling out with the ball is White, and he's wrapped up on the play by J.R. Hodges and Seth Harnden and brought down after a short gain. Jason Harnden. 
uh, Jason Harden. And uh, Mr. White, I think he's had enough. He's, uh, <laughs> he's uh, had the wind knocked I, out of him here, I hope. I, 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 if folks can cry my listen, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh to see him down. Poor David's had a rough he's night. He's had a tough time. Uh, and I think, well, they're checking his leg, and I hope that's nothing serious. I was hoping it was just getting the wind knocked out of him because he was hammered hard. JR is a big young man. He's a sophomore and goes uh, 5'11 and 190. And uh, he was joined on the hit by uh, Jason Harden, another sophomore. He's 5'8 and 180. And uh, David White's got his leg bunged up a little bit. It'll be fourth down and uh, long for Kermai at their own 47 yard line. Coach Wicks and Coach Larry Garropy uh, helping off uh, David White, Alan Rawlinson. Goes back in at quarterback, and uh, he'll uh, try and do something here with his troops on fourth down and uh, about 15 yards to go at the Carmine 47 with 2.20 left in the ball game. Here come the Bulldogs out of the huddle with the wishbone, double tight ends. There's the snap. Henry Lewis, the second man through, is going to be short of the first down as he sat down on the play, initially by David Jordan, and he got help from uh, Clayton. And it's first and 10 meals at midfield, right directly on the midfield stripe. And again, the meals have their second unit out to uh, run the offense. Jason Herndon, Zach Hooper, J.R. Hodges, Bobby Wells, and Rennie Cates make up the interior line. Tight end is Ryan Best. John Warren takes the snap. He hands off to Brett McGuire, who has a big hole. He is just collared down by uh, Brian Rich, who's back out there, uh, but not after he picked up eight on the play. So it'll bring up second down in about uh, three for the Mules at the Carmi 43. A minute and a half left to go in the ball game. There's the snap, and with the football is David Jordan. David running hard on the play. Crosses the 35 to about the 33. It's a first down, Mule. So first and 10 for, Carm or for Fairfield at the Carmi 33. A minute 12 left in the contest. And uh, Chris Melton brings the play in from Coach Bob Hadfield. And he splits wide to the left. John Warren takes the snap, hands it off to Brandon Doty. Brandon breaks into the clear. Brandon's still on his feet, and he's inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line where the Mules will have a fresh set of downs with 51 seconds to go. Well, you know, the Mules are not trying to score again, Bob, but you know these youngsters who uh, don't get to play a lot are wanting to put it in, in the end zone. You bet they are. Here they come out of the huddle with the clock moving. First and 10 at the Carmi 18-yard line. Warren takes the snap, hands it off to David Jordan, and David breaks away from the initial tackle and gets up to about the 16 where he's hit and dropped with 30 seconds to go in the ball game. And by the time they blow this in, the Mules may not even come out of the huddle. So they don't have to now. So it'll be second down at the 16 and uh, less than 20 seconds left when it's blown in. The Mules probably will not run another play. They're not. They're not even going to come out of the huddle. Fairfield Mules. Mules have won the homecoming game in 1994, 53-set over the Carmi Bulldogs, and they were impressive tonight offensively. Meals go to 7-0 and on the year, 6-0 and in the NEC, and have gained at least a share of the conference championship, and will go for the whole ball of wax next week against Lawrenceville. The Meals have won it here tonight, 53 to nothing. That's Meals football. Stay tuned for the Napa Auto Parts postgame show.